Thing end users and it's a designers uh, session. I'm Sven Kratz from FXPAL. I'd like to introduce our first paper uh, using and exploring hierarchical data in spreadsheets uh, by Carrie Chang and Brad Myers. Okay. Hello. Hi, everybody. Well, thank you for coming. So in this paper, we explore new ways to extend spreadsheets to support using hierarchical data, such as uh, JSON and XML data. Uh, this research is motivated by the fact that more and more data today exists in hierarchical data formats instead of traditional table formats, such as CSV. So for example, most modern web services uh, return data in JSON or XML. Um, so currently, to use hierarchical documents often requires a person to write a lot of code to uh, parse the document to extract desired fields and manipulate them to get the result. Uh, so the spreadsheet, while being one of the most popular tools for using data among people of all programming levels, uh, its table interface is by nature um, not good for handling data with nested hierarchies. It makes using hierarchical data quite inefficient. So our goal with this work is to extend spreadsheets uh, to bring the support of using more types of, uh, to bring the support of uh, using hierarchical data uh, to more uh, users from end user programmers to professional programmers or data analysts. Uh, so let me use an example here to explain what are some problems of using a hierarchical document in conventional spreadsheet uh, currently. So here I have an example JSON file that ha that is a list of conference papers. So each paper here uh, has some flat fields like ID, title, abstract, but also some hierarchical fields like the keyword field that has a list of keywords or the author field that has a list of author objects. Each object has a name, an institution, uh, a con a city and a country. Uh, so sometimes when doing data, analyst, uh, data analysis, uh, the structure in data can be very useful to let people select the desired data. For example, if I want to get all the first author's names in JavaScript, I can write this uh, JSON path query to extract the data that I want. Uh, the star signs mean all the papers, and the zero index means the first author of each paper. But when I flatten this data into a table to use in conventional spreadsheets, the hierarchies in data would inevitably create a lot of repetitive values. Uh, for example, in this spreadsheet, a paper title is repeated more than 30 times in order to let each of its author and keyword to pair once. So imagine having 400 papers in this format. It is almost impossible to quickly get all the first author's names. So this spreadsheet is called a long table because the hierarchies in the data uh, are expanded vertically. Uh, there's another way to flatten a hierarchical document by expanding the hierarchies horizontally, and this is called a Y table. In a Y table, each table is a role, so there's no repetitive data. However, as you can see now uh, in this spreadsheet, there are so many uh, columns and so many empty cells because uh, the paper can have different numbers of keywords and authors. So the system needs to generate uh, columns that are the maximum length of the arrays to show all the data. For example, here the maximum number of, the, uh, of keywords a paper can have is 12, so the system creates 12 uh, keyword columns in order to show all the data. So the large uh, number of columns and empty cells make it very difficult to read data in a while table or do any further data anal uh, analysis. So uh, we want to extend a spreadsheet to provide a better interface to few hierarchical data, we, and we also want to have a language to be able to let people select the data using its structure. Uh, another observation we had was that many data analysis people do every day involve regrouping uh, the data using a different field. For example, this paper JSON file by default comes in uh, group by their ID or their title. But uh, what if I want to find out, say, which institution has the most paper? Then I need to uh, regroup the, uh, the data using the institution field. So in confessional spreadsheets, uh, this is where people use pivot tables uh, to perform custom grouping some data. However, uh, pivot table won't work if the data has a lot of repetitive values or if the same type of data, like paper keywords, are put in uh, different columns. Uh, so the pivot table also works very differently from the basic spreadsheet model of spreadsheet functions and formulas, and uh, is often consider, uh, considered a more advanced uh, feature. 
So to address these problems, uh, our work introduces several innovations to the spreadsheet model. First, uh, this work contributes a new way to visualize hierarchical data in spreadsheets as nested tables. Uh, working together with this new nested table displays, uh, we introduce a set of extensions to the spreadsheet languages, sorting, filtering, and autofilling mechanism uh, to enable people to manipulate data in the spreadsheet using its hierarchical structure. And to further support more types of data analysis, uh, uh, we introduce new interaction techniques in the spreadsheet to let people group and join hierarchical objects by arbitrary fields. So I go, I'll go through these uh, contributions in details later. Uh, but a big difference between our work and how conventional spreadsheets uh, handle uh, hierarchical data is that our work, our methods work directly on hierarchical objects without uh, flattening them. So we try to leverage the structure in the data to provide more support of using hierarchical data to the users. So we implemented those innovation in the spreadsheet tool called NICE. So if you're interested, we have three prior publications on NICE about using spreadsheets to exchange data with web services, to program interactive uh, data-driven web applications, and to use streaming data. Uh, but in this Kai paper, we focus on using spreadsheet uh, to help people use hierarchical data. Uh, so I'll first talk about the new method to visualize hierarchical data in spreadsheets. So this method uses the relative hierarchical relationship among data extracted in spreadsheet columns to show the data. This means that the user can dyna dynamically create different views of the same data by changing their order in the spreadsheet. Uh, so I will use a video to demonstrate the novel features. Uh, in this video, I will explore the paper JSON file that I just showed you uh, uh, to find out which institution has the most papers. So if you're familiar with working with JSON data, um, if you are going to do this by writing code, you will first have to ex uh, go through the big paper array to extract unique paper title and institution pair, and then you will aggregate the pairs uh, using institutions and uh, to get the number of paper per institution, and then finally you can do a sort to get the institution that has the highest paper number. And I'll show you how you can do all of these uh, using spreadsheets uh, in our system. So this is our tools interface. So the left pane is where the user can load a JSON document by either entering a web URL or load from a local file. Uh, the right pane is a spreadsheet. So to start using a JSON document in our tool, the user begins by extracting fields that she thinks are relevant to her task to the spreadsheet by selecting one of the fields from the left pane and drag it to a spreadsheet column. So the system will collect similar fields for the user to fill in the column using the structure of the document. So here, uh, the user starts by extracting the paper title, um, the author names, and institution fields uh, to the spreadsheet. And uh, you can see that here the system creates nested cells to show the author data for each paper. Uh, in our tool, how a column is visualized is always decided by its left column. So the first column is always flat. For the rest of the column, if the left column comes from an, um, an ancestor field, the data in this column are going to be shown in nested cells uh, uh, to, to be in the same role with their ancestors. And if the left column comes from a sibling field, uh, like here, uh, the author names and institutions are siblings, uh, the system will copy the left column structure and put the siblings in the same role. And now when I drag the paper title field to the back to let this table uh, start by the author information, you can see that the system reshapes the data. Uh, again, the first column is always flat, so the, now the author data are put in uh, a flat column but now for column C, uh, the paper title, the system found that its left column, author institution, is actually from a descendant fill. So the system repeats the ancestor value, which is the paper title, to again let the ancestor and descendant be in the same role. So this dynamic uh, visualization method allows the user to easily structure or flatten the data by moving the columns uh, using drag and drop. The user can further regroup the data by any fields she wants. So in our system, the columns used for grouping are always put uh, at the beginning of the table. So for example, my task here is to find out which institution has the most paper. Uh, so I will move the institution field to the front of the table, and that causes the system to flatten the data first by institution, and then, can right, and then I can right-click on the institution column and choose this group by option. Uh, to regroup the data. The system will merge uh, cells that have the same values in column A and put the values in B and C into nested tables. 
And so you can see that now column B has a lot of paper titles, a repetitive paper title, because a paper can have multiple authors from the same institution as shown in column C. So I can use this group by feature again to merge duplicate paper titles in column B. And now I have a new view uh, of the paper data that is grouped first by institution, and then uh, for each institution, all its paper and all the authors of that paper that is from this institution. And I want to show you a little bit about what's happening in the back end. So in the back end, the system is actually reshaping and restructuring the extracted JSON data uh, into different structure as the user moves the column to different location and selects grouping. Uh, because the back end data is always a structured JSON object, uh, it makes further using the data by its structure uh, possible. Uh, for example, we're able to uh, extend the special language syntax to support selecting data using the nested structure. Uh, the syntax uses the column and nested row labels. So for example, uh, C1.1.2 <coughs> here select the cell Nicola Dell. And the user can also select multiple nested values using uh, the parent row label. For example, C1.1 will select all the authors of the first paper and uh, B1 will select all paper titles from the first institutions. So selection that return multiple values uh, can be used in many conventional spreadsheet functions that takes a list of values such as uh, count, sum, and average to calculate the aggregation of the data. So together with the grouping feature, this allows the user to calculate summaries of data by writing spreadsheet formulas without having to learn pivot tables. Uh, so back in the scenario that I want to figure out which institution has the most paper. So I, here I insert a new column next to the institution column, uh, and I enter the formula uh, count C1 uh, into the first row uh, to count all papers from the first institution, and then I use the uh, conventional the auto fill, the drag and fill gesture to fill this value for all the institution. And finally, I can sort the data to bring the institution that has the most um, paper number to the top. And now I have my answer. Uh, so we also extend spreadsheets uh, sorting and filtering to work on nested hierarchical data. Uh, so sorting and filtering on a nested column will affect on the data in the same or deeper hierarchical level, but will not affect on its the order of its ancestors. So here, if I sort by column C, the system will sort the data alphabetically, uh, sort the paper titles alphabetically within each institution, but it will not change the order uh, of the institution. And uh, finally, we introduce a way to join multiple hierarchical objects in the spreadsheet by common columns. Um, so I'll, here I'll give a quick ex uh, demo to show you how people could use this feature. Uh, for, oops. for example, here I have another JSON file that has all the paper, uh, all the sessions in the conference. Um, each session has a name, has a title, a room, and the list of paper that are in their IDs that's going to be presented in this session. So I already extracted the fills that I need from both the paper and session file. So you can see that there's a gray line between the two tables, between column B and C, to show that these two tables are not from the same file. So to find out a paper's presentation time, I have to connect the two tables together by their paper IDs. So to do so, I select the two paper ID columns, right click, and choose this uh, join option to combine the two tables. So you can see that the two tables now become one, and each paper now has its corresponding session information. Uh, connected in the, back, uh, in, in, in the back. So our joining method preserves the structure of one hierarchical object and connect the other object to the preserved object by common fields. So this is similar to a left join or a right join in SQL uh, where one table gets preserved. Uh, but different from joining uh, two flat tables in conventional SQL database tools, our joining method operates directly on hierarchical objects uh, without flattening them. So this results in a new hierarchical object that can be manipulated, reshaped, and regrouped uh, as other regular hierarchical objects uh, in our tool. Uh, so we ran a lab study to evaluate these new features for using hierarchical data. Uh, we recruited both spreadsheet users who are not professional programmers and uh, professional programmers to use our tool, Excel, or uh, writing JavaScript or Python code to complete five data exploration tasks using the paper and session JSON file that I just showed in the video. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so I don't have time to go into detail of the study, but to sum up, uh, we found that spreadsheet users who are not professional programmers and almost had no prior experience using JSON data could learn to use our tool after a short tutorial and complete the study task almost two times faster than spreadsheet users using Excel and professional programmers writing code. So uh, in conclusion, we have shown in this work that uh, the familiar spreadsheet can be extended in a way that end user can understand to support using hierarchical data without having to flatten the data into a flat table. Um, so I think this opens some interesting future direction uh, for future work. So for example, the spreadsheet can now also output uh, hierarchical objects or visualization since the backend data uh, are still structured objects. And another possible type of output is to generate code that can manipulate the data as how the user manipulate them in the spreadsheet uh, to let people reuse uh, this data manipulation behavior in a bigger program. And, and finally, uh, this paper introduced um, a way to use spreadsheet to let people select field from hi hierarchical document to do sorting, filtering, grouping, joining, and aggregate data using spreadsheet functions. So we, if we can build a mapping between the techniques introduced in this work uh, and a database query language, our tool could pot potentially become a console that will help end users use spreadsheets to construct database queries and interact with databases. Uh, we had a lot more details and discussion on it on the system and the study uh, in our paper if you're interested. So uh, thank you, I'm open for questions. Hi. Thank you. Very short question. You teased us almost, oh, you teased us, it's so short. You teased us for five minutes with the paper count, so who won? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, was, it was last year's Kai, Kai data, so um, CM, CMU was the first one, but it's different this year. He asked me who, who won, like which institution had the most paper last year, and I said the answer was CMU for Kai 15. So, but <laughs> for for last year's Kai, okay. Hi, Dan Ashbrook from the Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm curious if you've thought about ways to uh, use this for taking the data and then adding extras. So I might want to add a new field to all of my records in that JSON file. Yes. So uh, if you look, at, so I, I, I skipped some details about uh, creating new hierarchical data uh, using our system. So it's in the paper. So in our system, the user can select one column and, and say insert a new column that's in the same structure as this column. So this can be, for example, if I want to manually enter all the author's email, mm -hmm. then I could select the author's names and then insert a new column that has the same structure in it input the data. Uh, our system currently don't let people create arbitrary structure, so the structure has to be uh, the structure that people, people extracted from the original files, uh, but that can be a future work since we have shown that the nested table referencing, uh, pre representation is something that people can understand. Well, thanks. One thanks. other question I had sure. was um, how does it handle uh, fields that are not present in, mm -hmm. in the entire file? Yeah, so um, so, okay, so I'll, I'll try to explain it with an example. So basically, if a paper has no author, then it would just be a blank mm -hmm. cell. So it will be marked uh, in gray color. That's how the system uh, handled this right now. But you can see our system, it can handle the case where different papers have different numbers of authors. So it just have uh, different numbers of, uh, uh, of nested cells in, in the cell. But yeah, if, if there's a completely missing field, then it would just be blank. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay, well then, thank you very much, uh, Carrie.